I have the great honor of introducing Morris Marcus. Morris, you were born in the mirror in yeah, Poland. Behind the yeshiva. And how old were you when you when nine, you left? Ten, nine. And you still remember? You still well, have I, memories? I remember every, look, I remember one of the most beautiful memories I have it was in Shmini Atzeret, the, the Rosh Yeshiva, or Mir Yeshiva, used to get an avatiach and grapes from Israel. And he used to take a razor and cut each grape into a thousand little pieces wow. to give everybody all the, a all taste the bottom, wow. and say Shechayan, with the taste of uh, Israel. I remember wow. the songs that used to sing there. Do you remember some of the, the tunes? Sure. Do you want to sing one? Mm -hmm. You want to sing one? Yeah, I can sing. Let's hear. Uh, I'm sure. Hear. Sure, our listeners would be delighted to hear. Yeah, din bagoyim malai kviyot mochatroit leret raba. Yeah, din bagoyim malai kviyot mochatroit leret raba. Minachal badere, ishte menachal menachal badere, ishte menachal menachal dere, ishte menachal. Okay, yorim roi. Can you imagine the picture? This a thousand shiva bachurim singing this. This is the Rosh Yeshiva song when he walked through. Oh. It was a fantastic thing. To us poor people, we had visitors, of course there were rich people in here as well. Yeah. You had Kat, uh, uh, Katsav, he became the Prime Minister, the, the President of Israel. And the rich, as poor, uh, 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 we were poor, poor, poor. But I remember the, the Rachtung of the American, especially Yeshiva Bachurim. They had double sided pocket mirrors. Can you imagine? Double sided pocket mirrors. And you were only 10 at the time. Hey. You were only 10 years old. Um, no, I was 10 and, uh, when you left. Nine and a half, and we left South Africa. I remember things. Yeah. My late father left in 1930 to come to South Africa, and he's, he was a, ta a hand tailor. This is another side of the story. Do you know Cape Town at all? Mm. The, um, we lived in Weinberg, on the corner of Pierce and Cagles Road, on the way to the shul, the corner shop. That shop belonged to the Ackermans. Ackermans' first shop in South Africa was in Weinberg. That's right. And they lived there. Raymond used to visit his grandmother there. And they sublet the front corner shop to my late dad. Wow. But the people who lived in, who had that shop before, my late dad, were the Fawuts. Really? Wow, that's amazing. So, Hedrick Fawut, wow. was born there. His father had a paint shop before my dad took over to become a tailor shop. And Morris, let me ask, going back to Mio, mm. do you remember the castle? The of very imposing the, the castle, castle, you remember? My granny had the mill, Bab, what Bashe, the Milnachke, she was known. I remember when she passed away, my lay dad had already gone to, to South Africa, and this was the second night Pesach. I remember she passed away, and I remember they had the funeral on second day Pesach in the after evening. I can even see the Leviathan now. But I went back, when I went back now to, to uh, Mir, the whole cemetery was flattened.
was chasing. Not a stone was sending. Was it very was it very difficult going back? Mm. Was it very difficult for you to go back to to visit your where well, you were the, born? Your Barry the, came with me. Barry, that's and Rabbi we, Barry uh, Marcus. We flew to Minsk, and then we we had a man um, took us around. We went to Mir, Slonim, Baranovich, all this. Uh, all these places. How was it emotional going back? How mm -hmm. was it for you emotionally? Emotionally, how was it for you going back to Mir? It must have brought, brought back all the memories, all those rich... Uh... There was nothing there. There was a building left from one of the yeshiva buildings. Today it's a, post office. a, post, office it's a post office. It's a post office. And right. a shoe shop. Yeah. Not a yid left in there. But I can still see it, below the castle, this huge graveyard, 1,200 of my mentors and my contemporaries murdered there. It, it made, of course, it is, it's emotional. It's very I emotional. I could actually picture the ground moving like this. I... But one of the interesting things, we went back to Minsk, I don't know if you know Minsk. I've been there. They, in Minsk, they've got the co communal centre, yeah. right? And when I came there, they um, told me that the Gruzinim had stolen two, the, the only Torah they had in, the, in that yeshiva, in, in that complex. And anyway, I went back to South Africa I managed to get two Torahs. Two separate Torahs, right. And I flew back to Minsk. And this is in the story in itself. What I did, I took the club off the outside Chaim and put them in my bag so that I can carry it. The outside Chaim, I packed the bubble pack and corrugated the thing. It was big like this. I arrived back in Minsk. And this was in the El Al Lufthansa uh, terminal. And my, the Atze Chaim like this were the last, or there was an officer standing there. And I looked through the glass window, and to my surprise, there was Barry, the chief rabbi of Russia, the chief rabbi of uh, um, Belarus and uh, some of the Gaboim from the shul to meet me there because I never had the Torah. And as the Atze Chaim were going around like this, the um, uh, officer there, the customs man said, what have you got there? So I said, if you look there, you see the chief rabbi of Belarus, of wow. Russia, my nephew from London. He gives me salute like this. Sure. He says, Please go through with my blessings. Wow, amazing. We arrived at the shul with the Torahs and the Oi! Well, they found the two Torahs. Wow. At one of the, on the round thing, they found the disc. I didn't even know it was there. We cleaned the disc. And on the disc was written, D. Tere is geschrieben by a sofa in Vilna. Unbelievable. They, they were over 100 years old. Over 100 years old. They were Amazing. so happy. They were so happy. But the memory I have best is the uh, the Atze Chaim wrapped in bubble pack. They'd never seen bubble pack in their life. Wow. They were fighting each other to get peace. <laughs> And uh, it's amazing, Morris, you've kept a very close connection with the mirror in your yeah. shalayim. Yes. You, there's a room in the mirror that's dedicated to your family. Look, and uh, um, you actually... You know, we have... Um, a, a, I have a mirror and a one word that I teach children. And I was in the committee of, Highland, of uh, Highlands House and uh, of the orphanage in Cape Town for years. And I teach him only one word. Vinatanu. You know what Vinatanu is? It's a palindrome. You read it back mm -hmm. to front. What you give, you will receive. Doesn't mean if I give you 
10 shekel today, I'm going to get 10 shekel back. Whatever you give, you will get back in some form or another. You will get it back in blessings. And just that little word, the Natanu, this has been my guiding life in life. And this is what I teach children. Thank you so simple much. Wow. Word, Morris, you must just have all of us him's blessings and it's been an honor and a privilege. Thank you. May I can tell you plenty more. We will. Poor, poor, poor. But we, one thing I can never understand, my late mother, Oliver Sholem, we were a big family from one little chicken, Shabbos by night, Friday night. She made food soup, chicken, for, for 30, 40 people, the pot was never empty. Never could understand it. And you had Bokrim coming over to mm -hmm. the house? Uh, boys from the yeshiva, the, the students would come? Well, the, they used to uh, it's a guess and tag. Guess and tag, in, know, different, different, guess. in different homes? Shabbos, <laughs> And Morris, you remember Mir very well. You sure, remember you. Sure. I've been back twice. I found the place where we lived. The, the, the house that we lived is in. Is it still there? The it house? is still there, falling to pieces. They, the bastards, the Polakim, let them suffer. They didn't suffer enough. One thing that people don't understand that the Polakim, Polakish bastards, the Roman Catholic Church, invited the Germans to build their extermination in the ovens in Poland, not in, not in Germany. Did you know that? All, all the extermination camps all the, uh, were in, was in Poland, and they were done deliberately by the Catholic Church in Poland. I remember, like today, a pogrom. How did the pogroms happen in Mir? It was in the winter, in the, around Easter time. They used to use huge blocks of ice from the lake and make a cross. And from the cross, as the water came, it was what was called the pishacht, the piss water that they used for holy water. And they got drunk on the wood camp. And they went running through the streets where the poor Jews lived in our area, hit, burnt, this was the Christian love and charity. And you remember? You remember I it? remember it. I, of course I remember it. It happened to me. It happened to our, our family. <laughs> Morris, it's been such a good to meet no, you, I such an honor. I can tell you, I'm going to tell them the story about Belfour. This is what they used, another one that used to sing. When the Rosh Hashanah there walked through, Moshe Emes, Paisa Rosa Emes, She Emes, Uta Rosa Emes, Oshe Emes, Uta Rosa Emes, Moshe Emes, Paisa Rosa Emes. Vanachnu, Vanachnu, Nei Vore, Eich Ja, Mei Ata, Mei Ata, Mei Adolam. Vanachnu, 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 Nei Vore, Boris, you remember this tune from the mirror? Yes, all three, all of them. They used to sing when the Shirosh Shiva walked through. In the mirror, in the, in, the in, mirror, uh, sure. in Lita, the mirror in Lita. No, Palin. It was part of Poland. Palin was on the border between Poland 
and Russia in those days. Yeah. Today it is now Belarus. Belarus, yeah. And you remember it? Sure, I remember. It's amazing. I know, but that's true.